Welcome to our global self-awakening workshop. I'm Zaratustra, broadcasting from Los Angeles. I'm really happy that we're all together today. Um, it feels really good that we come together and we all have one goal in common. And we're all seekers of the truth. We're all lovers of love, and we're all in this journey together. And we're all looking for one thing. Uh, we have a common goal, regardless of whether we've been doing spiritual practice or not, or what country we come from, what race, religion, uh, what sort of background we have, what language we speak. But the goal is common. Ultimately, we're all looking for happiness. Can you turn the music down? Or kill it? Yeah. The goal, the ultimate goal is happiness. You want to be happy. That's what you want. And that's the goal of every spiritual seeker. We may say, well, I want to become enlightened. I want to become one with God. But what is the uh, underlying of that statement is that I want to be happy. That's basically what we all want. And what happens is that in this quest for happiness uh, that we all are seeking, every human being on the planet wants to be happy. And maybe your version of happiness is different than the person next to you. Maybe the person next to you gets their happiness and satisfaction from destruction. Maybe they get very excited when they destroy things or they kill people or rape people or steal from people. Maybe that's how they get happy. So, and maybe, or you are happy from, constructing that you're building something you're getting something you're positive and um, you're working towards the good of yourself and everyone else it doesn't matter really which which how you find uh, and how you define happiness the ultimate goal is that you want to be satisfied you want to get what you want and that's what everybody wants. We want to get what we want. Quite often, when we get what we want, we're happy for a short period of time because what we want to get is an object. And when I say object, I'm talking, I'm including thoughts and feelings. They're also objects. We get what we want, and a, and a good feeling, we experience a satisfaction. We feel good about it, so that's what we get. It's an object, because feelings, they travel. They come and go. They're not there all the time. So it's an object that is traveling through your vision of awareness through the spectrum of the awareness that you have an object is traveling through it that's a feeling and i'm going to get into that if i forget just remind me so i don't forget about talking about it so generally basically and this is for all human beings on this planet unless you are a yani and you have reached to the ultimate destination of, of consciousness, which is very, very rare and not too many people are there, but the rest of human beings on this planet, our happiness is based on things going our way, getting what we want, whatever that is. However you want to put it together, ultimately you're happy when you get what you want and you're miserable when you don't. 
as simple as that. You can examine it for yourself and see that in your life, when you get what you want, how you react, and when you don't get what you want, how you feel. And that is a conditional happiness and satisfaction. So that's not what I wanted. I recognized that at one point in my life, and I realized that there must be something beyond that. There has to be a greater place to arrive to, something that it's not transitional. And I'm, I, a part of me is a hedonist. A, I like to exaggerate things. I like to go to the extreme. And I did that with a lot of different things to push it as far as I could to see what happens. And am I going to be happy by exaggerating things or accumulating things and getting everything I want? And the, the bottom line was every time that that kind of happiness came to me, also it followed with some kind of disappointment and it followed with some sort of depression. So you get really high and as high as you go, you go really low because they're both different sides of the same coin. So if you're gonna get one, you're gonna get the other one too. So that's not where it is. It's not there. And uh, we're going to talk about this. We're going to get into that. That's going to clear a lot of things for you. I'm going to share with you a couple of tools of what you can do to pop out of this conditioning, what sort of exercise you can do on a regular basis to help you free yourself from this cycle of this up and down and up and down. So for the moment, before we get into that, let's just take a few moments and let's turn our attention from the uh, other world and shift our attention inward. And while you're doing this, let me just uh, explain one thing to you. If you trace your thoughts, inwards, if you trace them, where they come from, and you trace your thoughts, you have this thread and you're just following it to see where it goes. It comes to a place that is very empty and quiet. When a thought arises, where does it come from? What's before a thought comes? Even the thought of you that you think of yourself that I am Jane, I am Julie, I am Susan, okay? So before this thought comes, what's behind it? What's before the thought? And you just, and it's not a mental exercise. This is just simply you look you're simply watching, you're looking, and you trace back your thoughts and see where do they go to and what, where do they end up. If you do it co correctly, you come to silence. If you do it correctly, your mind stops because before you think, there isn't anything. Thoughts coming from emptiness. They come from nothingness. So follow back your thoughts inwards to where they originate, where they come from. And keep your focus, keep your attention on that place that your thought come from.
Yeah, just hang in there. Don't force anything. Don't try to make anything happen. A forced meditation is of no value. Simply hang out in this moment. Exercise your true nature. Get used to simply being here without trying to go anywhere, without forcing anything. Spending time in this moment. You're exercising your natural state. The mind is not there. Therefore, there's no agenda. The body can get up and do things, but there is no agenda. Simply hang out with Her Majesty, the Supreme Being that resides within you. Hang out with this being and enjoy the riches, the qualities. never been anywhere else outside of your own heart and you can't find it anywhere else it's not in Egypt it's not in Tibet it's not in India it's within yourself you are the one you're looking for all you have to do is stop, be quiet, and not be engaged with your mental activities. And then you start to feel the presence. It all will come to you. reveals itself. You don't have to intellectually understand. Same way, you don't need to know 
mechanical engineering in order to drive a car. You need to know how an engine works in order to drive a car. You just drive the car. You have to learn how to drive a car. But you don't need to learn how to build an engine. How a transmission works. How fuel injection works. And here too. You have many questions. But they don't really matter. When you are grooving and showering the bless of Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, is shining from your own heart. And you don't have to understand why and how that happens. You just be quiet. and be available and everything else come together Just hang out with your being and then what happens is your vibrations begin to raise, rise to a higher frequency. You're ascending to a different dimension. It's not a geographical move. Physically, go anywhere. You don't need to go to another planet. The journey happens within yourself. You find access to a higher level of consciousness where there is no drama. It's quiet. It's silent. It's still. Ascending to fifth dimensional consciousness, a dimension of oneness and love, purity, the being. All of that is within yourself. journey within. Traveling within different realms of consciousness within yourself. And the good news is that you experience Silence, peace, harmony, you feel connected. The higher you go, 
stronger transmission takes place, you receive the transmission of wisdom of the divine being and it will change you in cellular memory. Sometimes your body heals, your depression disappears, your pains, aches, emotional wounds heal, your mind becomes quiet, you feel expanded, connected, you develop gratitude, you surrender to what is. Fear, worry, anxiety begin to dissipate. Balance restores. And gradually you recognize the truth of who you are. Where you come from. What you represent on this planet. to your true power, recognizing you come from the land of love, the land of God, recognizing that you carry the torch of love, you the light, not a small helpless PDBD human being who is always dependent on things going his way or her way. You are beyond that. Way beyond. truth of who you are. Every spiritual seeker will come to this point and questions, who am I? I can't be my name because that can be changed. I can't be my nationality. That can be changed. It can be my religion because I can change my religion. Who am I? How do I define myself? social status, am I my job, who am I really, and what am I doing here, where is my ultimate destination, what is my goal, Am I here to simply be here, accumulate, create children, try to make money, try to get everything I want? What, why am I here? What is it that I'm doing here? on this planet. Why was I incarnated in this body? What is the goal? What's the point? Because if you're just to come here, occupy the space, make a couple kids,
and leave. It's kind of boring. What's the point? There has to be something much deeper than that. A greater de destination. Something must be important and greater than what it seems to be out there something because when I accumulate things I finally found the love of my life and that lasts for three years and then it ended then suffering came loneliness came and I finally made all the money I wanted but I wasn't happy I did all the drugs in the world but I wasn't happy. I drank all the alcohol in the world. But loneliness creeped in. Depression came back. I got everything I wanted. And I lost everything I had. Why is it coming and going? Why is this happiness doesn't last? very important questions you have to ask yourself or maybe I'm looking for it in the wrong place could that be is it possible that I'm looking for this happiness in the wrong place could it be somewhere else than where I thought it would be Slowly, slowly, now divert your attention from inner world to the outer world. Slowly, slowly, come back to the body, come back to this reality from an expanded place. You can still be expanded and open, but in your consciousness, your awareness, comes, returns into what we call it, this reality. And you sink in here. By now you should feel centered, calm, quiet, collected. And at peace. The ultimate goal of every human being is to be happy. To be accepted and to be loved. Whether we know it or we don't know it, we want to be seen by our loved ones. We want to be accepted and we want to be loved. That's what we want, and we want ultimately to be happy. It's not a lot to ask, really. It's not a lot to ask. It's your natural birthright that you enter into this dimension, you incarnate in this body, and your requirements are simple. You like to be loved, accepted, heard, and happy. But what happened is that we get conditioned, the mind gets conditioned that happiness and love are coming from the outside. I have to do something as a child in order to receive love. And therefore, everything around me starts to support that. But what happens is you start to get this imprint from childhood that you have to do something in order for mommy, daddy to love you. So 
you get trained to sort of prostitute yourself. It's some sort of minute prostitution. Whether you're a boy or a girl, that you learn the game of manipulation to do things that you get accepted and you get loved. Because if you go to school, you eat your vitamins, you eat your spaghetti, and mommy says, oh, good boy. Mommy tells daddy, look at him. He's such a good boy. Come over here, sweetheart. Give me a kiss. Daddy, he was so good. He ate his vitamins, he went to school, he had his spaghetti, and daddy will just kisses you, hugs you, and gives you a lollipop. So you get a reinforcement for your action that you did something, and then you get love and accepted, and you get accepted. In the same time, when you do something that's not appropriate or your parents don't agree, Parents, community, school, army, government, all of them. Then it comes in a form of a disapprovement and punishment because you did something wrong. Your parents weren't home and you and your younger brother or sister ate your spaghetti and put spaghetti sauce all over the white couches and the white carpet. Parents come back home and guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to get spanked or punished, something, some sort, for your bad deeds. So now you're starting to get brainwashed and trained to come to this way that when you do something that's not accepted by authorities, whatever the authority is, parents, school, teacher, government, army, work, then you get a negative feedback. And then when you do something that they accept, then you get positive feedback. So you're already starting to believe that acceptance and love is coming from the utter world. It comes from the outside. Then you're listening to a lot of love songs, all these love songs, excuse me. And, and love movies. And what happens is what happens in all these uh, movies. For example, I use one of them as an example just to make things simple. There's thousands of these movies that there is, for example, the boy who's kind of disadvantaged and they're in school and there's a football game going on and the this disadvantaged boy likes this girl and she doesn't go with him because he's poor or he's disadvantaged. Then he makes the final goal and the school wins. And as he they win, their team wins. And then he gets the trophy girl. So he becomes a hero and he gets the girl. And we have thousands of movies like that. And when you succeed, you get the boy, you get the girl, you get something. So now we're getting brainwashed. We're getting conditioned to believe this as a society, as a culture. As this is going forward, what happens is also how many songs, how many movies there are, and how many times it has, it has happened to you that you fall in love with someone and you're deeply in love, you're a couple, and after a while your love, your lover, 
your husband, your boyfriend, your fiance, whatever is the story, will tell you, I'm no longer, I don't love you anymore. I'm not into you. I don't want to be with you. Or they leave you or they cheat on you. So you're together and this person leaves. And what happens to you normally? You crash. You're deeply heartbroken. You're destroyed. You're ext extremely feel wounded. We all have gone through heartbreaks, haven't we? Many times, some of us. And some of us get very bitter. Some of us say that, oh, I'm not going to open my heart to anybody anymore. So there's this residue of an emotional damage on us that continues to haunting us the rest of our lives. So what happened here is you're projecting, it's another conditioning. Pay attention to this one. This is very important because this is going to save you a lot of pain and heartbreak. You've been conditioned, okay? Conditioned, brainwashed to believe that you fall in love with someone. You actually fell in love with another meat. This is a meat and you fell in love with this person. And when this person leaves you, you're destroyed. Your reality is shattered. And there are times that's been that the person who is heartbroken, they committed suicide. They took their own life because they thought they can't live any longer. And this is it. It's been so painful. Or they became alcoholic or they became drug addict or something very tragic happened to them after that. However, when we start to wake up on this path, as we get closer to the light, we start to realize the love that you fell in love with someone, you didn't really fall in love with that person. That person is your mirror, is in front of you. This person that you really, this person you're really in love with, it's really your mirror. You're looking at yourself. You're experiencing the love which is within yourself. This person that you fell in love with, it's pulled the trigger inside you. And by pulling this trigger, it activated the love which is within yourself. You are experiencing the divine self. You're drinking your own juices. The love that is coming. The fountain of love is within yourself. It's always there. It's always generating. But you've been programmed to believe it comes from the outside. So when you get it from the outside, consequently, you're going to lose it. At one point in your life, you will lose it. And since you're so invested and projected that it came from the outside, you crash when you lose it. That's it's one my goal to make you understand that love, happiness, that you're looking for, that you're so, all of us so badly want to be happy, so badly want to get to this place of ultimate satisfaction, of ultimate peace within ourselves, that we are going the wrong path. We're looking for it somewhere else outside of ourselves we're looking at it for in an object and so when you finally get the object you finally get it 
this object is only going to make you happy for a very short period of time. And then you get bored with it. Or it gets bored with you. So it's not really outside of yourself, my brothers and sisters. It's not there. You're going in the wrong direction. Stop. Come back. Shift your attention inwards. It's not out there. It's never going to make you happy. It's always going to bring misery at the end, no matter what. If you're projecting it outside of yourself, it's always going to result in misery. It's just a matter of time. Because eventually you're going to lose your youth. Eventually your body's going to get old. Eventually you're going to be sick. Eventually you're not going to have that zest that you had. That vibe being so vibrant and you could get anything you want. All of it is going to shift eventually. And you're going to find yourself lonely. Unhappy. In this quest to getting something from the outside to make you happy. It's not there. It's an illusion. It doesn't exist. So how many times do you have to go through this process and get disappointed to get it? How many times life ha has to betray you for you to get this? Why not get it now? Why not stop and turn inwards? Look for it within yourself. Why don't you turn around, come home, come back. You've gone too far. You are on this boat. You've gone very far in the middle of the ocean and you're getting lost. Come back home, come back. Come back to safety. The waves of the ocean are going to eat you alive. Come back. What you're looking for is here. You are the one you're looking for. I'm not saying that you don't meet somebody and there is no love. Yes, of course, we're packed animals. And we like to come together. That's a part of our DNA. That's our nature. And we like to connect. And I'm not saying you're not going to have a partner in your life and not be with them. And there's anything wrong with it. That can ha easily happen. What I'm saying is don't fall into the illusion that that partner is making you happy. Find the happiness inside you. So you're attractive then. So you're not needy. Because no one's attracted to a needy person. And if someone's attracted to a needy person, then that's going to turn into a twisted relationship. That's going to come to a torturing re relationship. Because there is something in that person too. But once you start to discover it inside yourself and start to drink it and recognize it, it doesn't matter physically what you look like or what your body looks like. You become very attractive because another person sees the light in you. And we're all attracted to the light. We're all looking for the light. The light pulls us. So that's the key. The recognition of 
the fact that you're complete and you're whole and that's not a mental understanding you have to be quiet be in meditation and be here and then the love appears and you feel it on regular basis regularly you feel this love and yes there are moments in your life that you may get angry you may get sad you those things going to come and go too i'm not saying that every single moment of your life you're just in this blissed out state and you don't feel anything else but only this no i'm not saying that that becomes the underlying of your being because you recognize you're complete you discovered god within yourself so now you're accepting and loving yourself as you are there's no longer this mental battle with yourself you recognize this here within yourself so you're complete this is not being narcissist not an ego trip oh i am perfect i am love i am better or i am blah 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 no it just happens in a very subtle way you recognize who you are and you're 100% okay with the way you are and that's where it makes you very attractive because everybody wants to be around you because you are have discovered the light within yourself you're feeding off of your own light you're not looking for it somewhere else but you can get to this from a mental way this is not a intellectual understanding this is beyond intellectual understanding you have to be quiet your mind you have to go beyond the mind you have to come to inner silence that's why i keep saying be quiet be silent so you can feel the juice the more you're quiet the more you disengage yourself from the world the more you start feeling the juice because the juice is here so it requires a disconnection from the outer world you have to shift your attention from the outer world and bring your attention to the inner one and have no idea drop your spiritual ideas they're very dangerous be naked be simple and just be in this place i don't know anything and don't conceptualize anything just be in this place of not knowing because i don't need to know the mechanics of a car how the wheels are connected to the car how the brakes work how an engine functions how transmission works how fuel injection works i don't need to know its mechanics all i need to know is drive the car so you don't need to know those things don't get caught up with trying to figure those things out simply be quiet and hang out here and then you start to discover the presence you discover the guru inside you and your guru your inner guru you begin to hear the language because when you don't pay attention the inner guru cannot communicate with you because you don't understand the language so you're looking for it outside of yourself you're running to this teacher that teacher this teacher that teacher because you think they have it and you go and start worshiping him so you're still projecting it on somebody else it's not somebody else sweetheart it's yourself you're the one you're looking for 
but you can see yourself unless you're quiet. If your mind is busy, so there's clouds. Clouds are in front of you. So you can't see. It's too foggy. You have to go beyond the mind. Then you start to see yourself. You have no idea how majestic, how powerful, how big you are. You have no idea you're the queen and the king, yet you think you're a beggar. You're running around with your begging bowl, begging for someone to put something in there. A lover, your parents, your kids, your teacher, someone to maybe give you a little bone. You're not, you don't know you're the king, you're the queen. You don't know your own worth till your attention goes within. What do I do on everyday daily basis, Zarathustra? Everything you say sounds great. I love it, Zarathustra. I love it when we're sitting together. I become calm, quiet, and very centered. But two days or a day after, my kids drive me crazy. My partner drives me crazy. I watch the news, I get this anxiety, all these things happen until I see you again. So what do I do in between? I see you're laughing, Martina. <laughs> nice to see you, by the way. Okay, you, this is a tool I'm sharing with you and you have to do it. You can't just do it for an hour or two and then give it up. Because our natural tendency of suffering is we want to go back to suffer. So, because you're used to it for years, it's become very comfortable that you've been suffering and going through all these ups and downs that you think this is high, it should be, down deep. So you have to change that. And you have to change it in the cellular memory. You can't just decide mentally I want to change it. It has to be changed in the cellular memory. So in order to do that, it has to be seen. If it's not being seen, then it's an unconscious pattern that repeats itself because it's not being observed, whatever that is. Let's say you're a cigarette smoker and you're smoking 20 cigarettes a day. You want to quit smoking. Music. You're smoking cigarettes, you want to give it up, you can't give it up. And then you keep complaining that I need to quit smoking, I need to da 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 da, and then we run to the 7 Eleven and buy another pack of cigarettes. So the cycle keeps going and going. The number one thing is you need to see it, you need to become aware of it. Awareness needs to be here. That you had body got addicted to cigarette smoking. You have this habit. Now, don't take me wrong. I'm not saying smoking, smoke or don't smoke. I don't have no moral issues, spiritual issues, or any hang-ups about cigarette smoking. Do whatever you want to do. Do what you need to do, whatever that is. I'm not saying it's spiritual or not, not spiritual. I don't have any stories about it. I don't like the smoke of cigarette. But you do whatever you want to do. So it's not spiritual or unspiritual from my point of view. Because God is in everything, including cigarettes. 
But awareness comes. You become aware that you're smoking. And you admit it. You see it. And you recognize that your body wants to go and pick up a cigarette and smoke. So you admit it. You acknowledge it that that is what's going on. So there's awareness here, even though you continue doing it, but now you are aware of what you're doing because observance is here. Awareness is here. You're not unconscious any longer. And it doesn't matter if your body keeps doing it. You're no longer addicted to cigarettes because the awareness is here. Because you're fully aware that your body is addicted to do something but your awareness is not, has no addiction to it. It's simply aware of what the body's doing. So now you're no longer addicted. So it's something that rises in consciousness and falls in consciousness. Same thing with your emotions. Your addiction with your suffering is you wake up in the morning and you feel depressed. Depression comes, you're really depressed. So you see, you look at the depression as a form of a passing emotion. Something is passing in your field of awareness. An emotion is passing through and you are aware of it. So you acknowledge its presence. You tell yourself depression is here Depression is visiting me and you're not resisting it. You're not trying to push it away. This is not one of those courses of classes of positive visualization or positive affirmation, okay? Don't come back to me and tell me, oh, I tried to push it away. I tried to say it's not here. I don't teach that. I had people come and tell me, I tried it, it didn't work. I kept telling myself, depression is not here, depression is not here. I'm not t saying that, okay? Pay attention. You simply say depression is here, depression is visiting me, and you are feeling the depression, okay? Feel it. Feel depressed, acknowledge it's here, acknowledge its presence, but don't say, I am depressed. Say, it's here, it's visiting me. So this is as if a guest has come to your house and the guest is visiting you. You're not your guest. And guests, they're like breath when you're breathing in and out. Guests, they have to come and they have to go. Otherwise, they choke you to death. Have you ever had a guest come and stay in your house for more than three, four weeks, a month, two months, and they land in and they camp out in the house? Then they're no longer a guest. Now they're choking you to death. So guest has to come and has to go. That's a guest. If they don't go, then they become a resident. Same thing, depression comes and you acknowledge it's here. You feel it. If you resist it, it persists. It gets stronger. But if you acknowledge its presence and you experience it while it's here, because you can't not experience it, it's bigger than you, then it just goes away. Same thing, sadness comes. Deep sadness comes. You feel the sadness. You acknowledge to yourself it's here. But you don't say to yourself, I'm sad. You only tell yourself sadness is here. Sadness is visiting me. And then it just goes away. It loses its power. It has no power because it's traveling through the field of awareness. You recognize who you are. You recognize you're the awareness. Awareness is here. Awareness is still. It's present. Awareness is not coming or not going. It's always here. 
and something comes and goes in the field of awareness. And now sadness is here. Then maybe frustration comes. Again, you don't tell yourself, I'm so frustrated. You may even say it, but you don't really mean it. You, you tell yourself frustration is here. Frustration is visiting me and you feel frustrated. And then it goes away. You need to change your language and be an observer of the emotion, not to identify with the emotion. You don't become the, the emotion. That's what you've been doing all of your life. All of your life, you identify with the emotion and it's very addictive. So some of you keep going through the same thing over and over and over again. A, we don't have the right training. We don't have the right tools. B, is everybody else around you does the same thing. So you're up and down and up and down like a yo-yo. And you go through this all of your life. And then you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that, you go see a psychologist, you take some pills, and none of it really works. And your suffering gets deeper because you're identifying with the emotion. You're identifying with your thoughts. You think whatever you're thinking is defining who you are. Your thoughts means who you are. That's not true. They come and go. Your thoughts always come and go. They don't stay the same. You don't think the same thing every day all the time. You don't feel the same feeling every day all the time. You're not always happy. Ah, you're not always sad. They come and go. So instead of putting your attention on what comes and goes, you're shifting your attention on that which is aware of them, the observer, the one who's observing things come and go, the observer of the emotions, the observer of thoughts, the witness, Bring your attention in that direction. And slowly, slowly, your emotions and your thoughts, they lose their grip. They start to loosen up. But it takes time and it takes practice because you have to uncondition, unclutch from 50, 60, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of one way of being. And now you're shifting from that. But believe me, it's worth it because what you get out of it is beyond. The results are worth it. It's a good investment because it leads you to freedom. It leads you to satisfaction. It leads you to happiness and frees you from this up and down, from the yo-yo.
Anybody has any questions for me? Do you want to wave or can we open the chat box? Let's open the chat box. So you can write on the chat box if you feel like it. And then, um, or if you have your camera on, wave at me and I'll, I will unmute you. The chat box is open. Hi, Ose. Nice to see you. I can't see your face, but I see you on Facebook. I send you a lot of love. No questions. What a nice bunch. Don't worry, I'm not going to bite. Like I said, music. And to watch the on is when we have some. Christian Biner, how can I transform myself? Okay, we have a question here. How can I transform myself in an observer? So that's a good question, Christina. So basically, you are the observer all the time. So let's clear one thing. You've always been the observer from ever since you were born. You're always observing anything that happens in your field of awareness. So you can't transform yourself to something you already are. You just have to become aware of it. So and this is how you become aware of it. This is what you do, is simply you can, in this very moment, practice what you've been doing all of your life. Like observe, you take a look. What's going on in your mind? Do you have any thoughts? I'm gonna unmute you so we can talk with each other if you don't mind. If you, I'm, Pressing on, you may want to unmute yourself. I send you a request for unmute, Christina. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Christina. Hi. Hi, hi. Sometimes it's very difficult because you are having some problems and you, you, you cannot go out of it and go to the observer <laughs> role. Right. Well, this is what you do. You just do it with simple things and then it becomes, it, you recognize it, it becomes your habit. So, mm -hmm. for example, do you like going to a coffee shop and people watch? Do you ever do that? Mm, no. <laughs> okay. So, okay. all right. So, it's okay. Do you, for example, right now, Close your eyes and tell mm -hmm. me what, what do you hear in your mind? Do you see anything? Do you, is there any words, any thoughts, any visions? Yeah, so I, I, I am a bit, a bit um, worried about my daughter. And, okay. Uh, so right. I, I'm thinking about her. <laughs> All right. So that is what's in your field of awareness right now. You yes. are aware that you are worried about your daughter, correct? Yes. Okay, so you're observing that worry. You're observing that concern right now. Okay. Yes. So 
worry about my daughter is here right now, is visiting you. Yes. It's in, it's in your field of awareness. Were you worried about your daughter a year ago like this? Mm, not always, no, sometimes. Not always. <laughs> so sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not there, correct? Yes, yes. And, and right now it's here. Yes. So now you're being observer. You're aware that this concern is in your awareness right now. Mm. That's observing it. Okay. Is it making sense? Yes. Okay. So let's do a little bit more of an observation practice. Um, what do you like to drink when it comes to drinks, coffee, tea, juice, alcohol, wine? Water. <laughs> water. Okay. Can you think of a glass of water right now? Close your yes. eyes and think yes. of a glass of water, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you see? I'm seeing a, a glass of water. Okay. Is it a big glass, small glass, tall it's glass? A, it's a big glass. Big glass. Okay. Now, what do you like to eat? What, what's your favorite food or chocolate or desserts or... or uh, fruits, fruits. Fruits. Like cherry. Oh. cherry. Like what? Cherries. Cherry. Cherries. Okay. Can you... Can you visualize cherries? Yes. Okay. So where, what do you like to drive? Do you like to walk? Do you like to go by the ocean? What do you like to do as far as something that refreshes you? As to far play, as an, yes, I like to play golf. <laughs> okay. So close your eyes and see that. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yes. Can you, can you do that? Can you observe that? Yes. Okay. So we did three different things. Mm -hmm. You observed a glass of water. You observed cherries. And you observed playing golf. Yes. That's being the observer. Mm -hmm. But in all these cases... You observed three different things in front of you in your field of awareness, in your imagination, in your thoughts, in your feelings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what stayed the same? What didn't change? Uh, myself observing it. Exactly. The observer remains the observer, but things come and go. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something. Is your body the same as it used to be five years ago? No. Ten years ago? No. So mm -hmm. have you been observing it changing throughout the years? Um, not exactly. <laughs> Maybe, yes, but not so aware. I wasn't so aware about it. But I mean, I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't thought about I. I didn't right. think. Yes. But but now that you look at it, you see it's been changing, correct? Yes. Right. So you've been observing your body's changing throughout the years. You're aware that it's not the same body it used to be five years ago. Yes. Correct. So that's your observation, power of observation. Mm -hmm. Now for that, what do you need to do? Uh, I just have to think about me, how I was like five years ago. Right. But so you're observing yourself five years ago and you're observing yourself today. Yes. And you're observing yourself that right now you have a concern about your daughter. Yes. So in all of these different cases, one thing never changes one thing remains the same and that is your the fact that you are the observer the observer remains the same okay you're not more an observer or less of an observer your power to be observing is not more or less it's the same one it used to be you you may not be 
you were not aware of it then, but it didn't matter. It's the same power of observing as you're five years old, 10 years old, 20 years old, or 90 years old. It won't make any difference. The observer remains the observer. Yeah. Yeah. Does it make sense to you? Yes. Thank Great. You. Was it helpful? Does, does this, is this something you can work with? Yeah, I hope. I hope. Because yeah. very go difficult ahead. to go outside of this uh, emotion and look at it, as you said. Well, this is, yeah. Very difficult to go outside of what emotion? Tell me that. Of, of this emotion of, of being worried, for example. Okay, yeah. It, you, well, this is the first step. You're simply aware. Okay, let's do this. I want you to, to feel this emotion. Close your eyes and feel the emotion. Yes. And when you're feeling it, where in your body do you really feel it? If it's in your body? Does yes, it, in my it, heart. In your heart. Okay. So look at it, and I yes. want you to tell yourself, as you're looking at it, I want you to tell yourself the worriness, the concern about being worried is here, and it's visiting me. Okay. okay? All right, go ahead, do that. Look at it, and tell yourself that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Did you do that? Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, pay attention to this. You're not saying, I am worried and I am concerned. You're saying, concern for being worried is here. Yes. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. So now watch it. Just look at it. Simply look at it. Oh. Don't do anything about it. Don't try to push it away. Don't hug it. Simply look at it. There is a concern about your daughter is here. There's a thought. There's an emotion is here right now. You can't help it not noticing it. Because it's bigger than you. So you simply watch it. You're not trying to push it away. Don't try to push it away. Simply be aware of it. That's all you need to do. And then I'm going to come back in 10, 15 minutes to you. And we talk about it. You just simply stay with it. Okay. 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 Can you yes. do that? Yeah? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back to you. Let's just give it a few minutes and then we'll come back and visit again. Okay. Is there anything, anybody, any questions anybody has? Cool. It's just okay. Hi, Kim. Nice to see you. Let's see. I'm gonna find you. All right, Kim. I'm unmuting you. Hello. Hi. Kim. Hi. Uh -huh. Nice Hi. to see you. Nice to see you, sweetheart. Good to see you and see you. I uh, I do have a question that I want to see how we can go about dealing with triggers such as your last class. I don't normally check the chat, but for some reason, I checked your chat last time and there was a very disturbing message of a way of a threat. And yeah. I, f I felt it triggered me. Okay. It hurt because because I want to protect you. 
I believe what you do is incredibly holy and for humanity. And I cannot imagine someone has such rage and hatred with foul language, you know, coming to your forum. And it makes me wonder what we do. Is this something that when we do something that is not common to mainstream, is untraditional, and we were more likely to trigger controversial you know, events or topics or triggering other people, how do you deal with something like this? I mean, I have, I mean, I, I haven't had it to this extent to what I experienced your, mm. in your form. Right. So how, do you, how did you go about working? Is this a chance for us to go within and stillness again? Because you know how you say everything in life is synchronicities and it happens for a reason and everything. How do you understand this process? Right. Well, that's a great question. Thank you for bringing this up. I really appreciate it. Uh, same, same way that when someone is praising me, same way that somebody is telling me how great I am or how appreciative they are, I deal with it the same way. I hear it, I acknowledge it, and I move on. So... Other people, they have the right to be angry or they have the right to attack me as well as they have the right to love me and praise what I do. That is a part of the duality. They're all allowed. So you just hear both of it and you're not attached to any of it and you move on with your life. And that also is a part of anyone who becomes a public figure or they dare to get out there and share uh, whatever that is, whether you're in spiritual world or you're an actor or you're a singer or whatever, you're a politician, whatever. Once you get out there, you are going to have to learn to deal with both sides. That's a part of this, the deal. So you learn not to be attached to the times that people are praising you or putting you up on a pedestal. You, and you learn not to be attached when they're threatening you that uh, you're an antichrist or you're a devil worshiper. So you stay neutral. I'm going to unmute you again. I'm sorry. I muted you. Uh, go ahead and accept. Yeah, thank you. Does, is this, does it, did it answer your question, honey? Yes, yes, clearly, because then that will give you courage to continue with your work. Yeah, right? because the, if, I, if I base my happiness based on what people think of what I do, or what kind of comments. So my well-being, my confidence, my mission is based on how many people are approving what I do or disapproving. Then my happiness and well-being is conditional. It's based on what the public think of me. And that's yeah. not where I derive my sense of happiness and fulfillment. I know who I am. I recognize that, so I'm at peace with myself. So whether other people like it or they don't like it, I, I'm, I am who I am and I'm happy with it. I don't have to rub it on other people's face. And if I'm in a hostile situation and somebody wants to kill me or shoot me or beat me up and I can just move away from it, I do. I get out of the way of the tiger I won't stay on the path of the of the dragon if I can if I can help it but that doesn't determine my happiness whether a million people are happy with what I do or one person is happy with what I do 
and this I look at it as a challenge and and as an opportunity to turn the poison to medicine when someone's attacking me and verbally or whatever so I look at it and I come back to myself I look at it whether there's a validity to it or not and I just sink back to myself and I use this as an opportunity to make me remember who I am so you turn the poison into medicine okay that was very useful great yeah. explanation fully understood thank right. you great you're welcome nice nice hearing from you and talking to you okay we do have let me go into all right Hi, Sharon. I'm going to unmute you. So, hi, Sharon. Oops. Okay. Hey, there we go. Yeah, hi. hi. Nice, seeing, nice seeing you. Nice Welcome see back. You Thank you. Thank you. Do you want me to read what I wrote? Yeah, if, so everybody else can hear it too. Okay. So, this was a question about duality existing in the fifth dimension. I okay. always I always think of it like you said well cigarettes are God so I don't think that I think of well I believe you though because I, I think you understand things more than I do so but I'm confused about it because um, and I think of duality as being on the third dimension in this uh, challenging planet that we have and I think of the fifth of divinity as being this just beautiful source of love and when we incarnate, we come in with that divinity within ourselves and um, we get distracted by lots of things, but we also come in with our karma. And the karma is the part of us that gets us in trouble and that we, you know, that, um, that we grapple with in our existence here. But that the um, divine source is always this just kind of, uh, well, yes, this very beautiful energy so um that's why i okay so all right let's confused. okay in a nutshell uh let's see if we can narrow it down so what is your if you were to ask me a direct question what is that well you you talk about god is including everything yes and that and so my direct question is that i think uh duality is existing on this third dimension and that divinity is does not have that duality that div divine source her majesty um god uh, the creator um is just this source of uh magnificent right love right and light right were you, were you at our last two um uh i attended events? The last one. I didn't hear the right. one before that. Yeah. I attended the yeah. first, the third, and the today. First, yeah. When, when you get a chance, if you have time later on next week, uh, watch the ones that you didn't you didn't see. So it was uh, that one, right? Yeah, there's, one there's some them. really this... gems gems okay. in there that you will get. But I'm gonna go through this again. The, your question is very valid. It's a question that every spiritual seeker encounters and struggles with this. And, you're not, and I appreciate you asking this question because it's everyone's question. So right now, I'm just going to uh, unmute you if you don't mind. Uh, mute you so there's no background noise. So um, when you start to awaken and you start to realize recognizing your true nature and you're going beyond the mind because the mind it categorizes things that this is good this is bad for instance what is good and what is bad 
it depends where you were brought up, what, under what system you grew up and how you were formed. For instance, if you grew up in Jamaica and you're a native, smoking marijuana, it's a very natural thing. Everybody smokes marijuana, grows marijuana, it's legal and it's natural. But if you do the same thing in Saudi Arabia, then you could be prisoned for life or you can be stoned or you can lose your life or whatever. Similarly, if you live in Scandinavian countries or Western countries, drinking alcohol is a very normal thing. Nobody thinks of it as a sin. So actually all the youngsters like in uh, a lot of Western countries are encouraged to drink. Societies encourage them, it's a part of the culture. But if you go to a Muslim country and a very strict Muslim country and you're drinking alcohol, that's a crime. And there's consequences that you have to pay for it. So this idea of good and bad is all depending where you were brought up and what is good and what is bad. It's cultural, it's conditioned to us. It's something we've been taught. If you grow up in, in some kind of, I don't know, Amazonian or African tribe that cannibalism is the way. So eating other, cooking, eating other humans, it's the way to be. And if you grew up in another culture, that's, that's a crime, it's a sin. So you start to pay attention to these things. And as you're waking up, as you're awakening, as you're just, your consciousness starts to, to expand. So you're not looking at things like this. So it's starting to open up. What happens is in this awakening process, you start to go beyond good and bad. You rise above what is good and what is bad because you start to realize that you've been conditioned to believe something is good and something is bad. Existence, life, doesn't care. Life doesn't care what is good and what is bad. If it did care, it wouldn't create the bad stuff it would only create what we consider to be good. If existence, existence cared, the divine being cared, then there won't be any child molesting or any raping or any killing. There would never be any wars. There would never be cancer. No one would be beaten up at age 13 by their parents or abused or sexually abused. None of these things would happen. Obviously, existence doesn't have a preference. It doesn't care. It doesn't care is because it's expressing itself. The infinite being, the absolute, wants to express itself and experience all aspects that do exist in life and doesn't limit its experience to one part or one thing. Okay, I'm unmuting you. Is okay. this making any sense to you? Yeah, I understand what you say. Um... I understand what you say. It's going to take a little bit of time to, for, for, for it to settle. And if you want freedom, if you want to become completely free, you're going to find yourself at a position that you have to, at one point or the other, now, five years, 10 years from now, or maybe next life or whatever, but for now, we're going to stick to this life because this is all we know. So we keep it simple. At one point, you're going to have to go beyond 
what is good and what is bad and what is right and what is wrong. In order to merge in, because this is the world of duality, whatever is here, the opposite exists. Third dimension is the dimension of duality. Anything you encounter, the opposite of it is equally existing. Well, who created that? Who created the opposite? How did it come to creation? Did God had a bad burrito or something, rotten food, and he just had indigestion. So through the indigestion created Hitler or through that indigestion created Saddam Hussein or life wanted to create them, wanted them to be the way they are, wanted them to express that aspect of God in murderous fashion that we experience. Why do we have a beautiful beach and then suddenly a tsunami comes and kills 30,000 people and 5,000 of them are kids? Why would something like that happen? Why would God do something like this? If you want to look at it that way, then you will see that you'll come to this conclusion that there is no justice. This must be a twisted, sick God, creator, that is sick because it enjoys a 13-year-old girl, have an alcoholic mother that the mother is putting cigarette uh, butts on the child's hand and burning the hand and is beating the kid, abusing the kid, the father's alcoholic, raped his own daughter. Why would these kind of things happen? What kind of God is that? If we want to look at it from the point of view of morality, of right and wrong, we never get the answers because there looks like more shitty, screwed up things happening in the world in comparison to the good things happening. And that will drive you crazy. Or maybe there is something beyond that. Maybe I can rise above that and look at the whole thing from another angle. Is it possible? Is there a possibility that there is something beyond that? Is it a possibility there's a wisdom behind it? I'm not saying any of you should agree with what I'm saying. I'm just asking a question. Is it possible there is something beyond what I see and what I experience? Could it be? And if the answer is yes, then it's worth investigating it because maybe I can find a deeper meaning to life by investigating this question. Or does it stop at this place? Because if it stops at this place, it's a very cruel, screwed up, fucked up world. And it's not worth living it. But through my direct personal experience, I can only speak of that. I can't speak for anyone else. There is something beyond. You rise above it. And in order to rise above it is you have to go beyond this thinking mind, which is conditioned, it's brainwashed based on our conditioning, cultural conditioning, parental conditioning, spiritual conditioning, especially spiritual conditioning, which for the spiritual seeker is the most dangerous thing that happens to us, us, the ones who come on spiritual path. We get deeply conditioned 
And in that conditioning, we become very prejudiced. Like racism. That's how we become. And we're really adamant that things must be this way because this is what I've been told or I believe. And that keeps you into this loop because you go around and round and round and you never get anywhere except you suffer. So that's where Gautama Buddha was talking about, I am in the world, but I'm not of the world. I am in the world, but I'm not of the world. So what happens is like the Lotus Sutra, the flower Lotus Sutra. Where does this precious exotic flower grow? Where does it come from? Do you know that? It comes from the swamps. It comes from a very filthy, smelly swamp. The most precious, beautiful flower that exists on the planet, it grows outside in the swamps and it go, gets above. So there is the swamp, the river, swamp, pond, and this one goes this much above it and it opens up so beautifully. So here's the filthy third dimensional world that has all these different aspects. And then the awakened being that wakes up, it rises above that means you transcend and you have an ascension to the fifth dimensional consciousness. You're ascending your consciousness to go beyond good and bad. So it's like a triangle. From good and bad, you come to the very top of the, the eye, the observer, the third eye, the watcher. You have arrived to that place because you're no longer bound and hunted by good and bad. You have gone beyond. And that's how you become free. And there's no other way. If you stay into this place of good and bad, you suffer and you never get anywhere until one day you pop out of it. But then again, no one needs to agree with me. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to say you're right or you're wrong. Everyone's entitled to their opinion and the way they want to be and how they want to pursue their spiritual path and development. I'm not here to convince anybody. This is what I discovered in my own journey. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you asking that question. Do we have any other questions, uh, Mr. Amir? Right. To go beyond the duality, duality is in the mind. The mind creates the duality because it's only in your mind, it's only in the thoughts that you exist. Your entire existence that you believe that you are somebody, a person separated from the good and the bad, it derives from a thought. That's all it is. Your entire existence all your idea of who you are, it's just a thought. That's all it is. It's the I thought. I am separated. I am a person. If your mind stops and you have no thoughts, then there is no notion and concept of being separated from anything. All those bad things and dark things are become an aspect of yourself. That's why I think 
on our first session, the first day, last Saturday, I brought a quote from Osho, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. The first time in 1989, when my beautiful brother Ernest gave me the book, I think it was called The Path of the Heart or The Way of the Heart. So I, he gives me this book, I open it up, I'm looking at the first page and the first sentence in this book said, I am all there is beautiful, I am all there is ugly, I am total. And I was shocked when I read this because I had heard about this incredible master Osho, so controversial, but this big time, bigger than life guru teacher. And he's saying, I'm all there is beautiful. I'm all there is ugly. I am total. And in that moment, I felt like I literally experienced somebody punched me in my third eye as if somebody hit me. And I was like, pooh, and I fell down. I literally fell. Luckily, I was standing right in front of my bed in my bedroom, and I fell down on the bed. I was gone. I don't know for how long I was gone. But it was like something triggered something inside me, even though I was a baby. It was just the beginning of my spiritual awakening. Didn't know anything. What do you mean I'm all there is beautiful? I am all there is ugly. It took a long time for me to encounter my darkness. I had to see my darkness. And I had to see my light. That they both coexist simultaneously in this man. Both sides simultaneously living here. We're all endowed by the power of being an angelic and an enlightened being. We're in the same time endowed by being an evil being. Simultaneously, we're capable of evil actions as well as angelic and loving actions. People say power corrupts. It's power that corrupts you. So let's say you put me in the place of Hitler. I am in that position. I'm in the position of a tyrant. I'm in the position of same position as someone, Stalin, or all these people who came to this planet and killed millions of innocent people and brought misery, or put you in that position. You're in that position all of a sudden. And people say it's power that corrupts you. So we put you in that position, and now this monster comes out of you because you got the power. I say, it's not the power that corrupts you. The seed of corruption is already inside you. The seed of corruption is already inside me. The tyrant, the dictator, the murderer, the seed of it is already inside me. By putting me in that position, you're cultivating and you're creating the environment for it to come out. We all have that inside ourselves. Some of you may say, well, not me. I would never do anything like that. The mind wants to come and say, I would not do anything like that. But it's already in you. It's in me. We all 
have it inside us. It's the environment. Which environment do you grow up in? Which environment is conducive to bring you to the light and ta or take you to the dark? It's in you. You have to admit it. And recognize it, that it's inside yourself. Because if you want to be one, you have to also acknowledge your dark side. People talk about, how many of you think killing is a bad thing to do, to kill someone? Raise your hand. How many people think killing is a bad thing? And how many of you thinking killing other human beings is a good thing? I'm the only one who has my hand up. Well, killing other people is not good or bad. You need to start it again. Yeah, yeah just one second. It's okay. I guess we'll let it go. Yeah. Killing other human beings all depends on your garment, what kind of clothing you wear. Fashion, clothes, did you know that? You ever knew that depending on what kind of clothing you're wearing, that, if, that determines if it's okay to kill other people or not okay. Just what you wear, clothes, did you know that? Did you ever think of that? That with the right clothing, you're allowed to kill other people. With the wrong clothing, you go to jail. If you're not wearing the right clothes, then you go to jail. If you wear the right clothes, then killing is okay. It's good. We're going to applaud you. You ever thought about that? If you're wearing army clothes and your country is in war with the next, next door neighbor and you're wearing your army clothing and you're allowed to kill other people. And actually, the more you kill, the more is you're going to be encouraged. You're going to get trophies. You're going to be applauded. You're going to come back home, be a hero. You get the girl. You get the car because you killed thousands of enemy soldiers. You were wearing army clothes. And now it's okay. But if you're wearing civilian clothes and kill somebody, you go to jail for the rest of your life. So is killing okay or not? Is killing other human beings defending your country is okay or not? You were saying killing is a bad thing. Killing is evil. Then how come all of a sudden it's okay when you're defending your home, you're defending your family against the enemy, all of a sudden killing is okay. So which one is it? Is it okay or it's evil? I don't, I don't understand. Is it white or black? Which one is okay? It depends what con context it goes to. If you're a policeman and you're chasing somebody who is a danger to the society or that person just killed another person and you shoot them and kill them, then you did the right thing. I'm not talking about George Floyd's situation that he was killed unjust but I'm talking about a regular policeman is defending the society and kills a criminal, kills a gangster. He's wearing the police uniform and he kills someone and no one's going to question it. So then it's okay. Do you understand this? Are you with me? Does this making any sense to you? I'm using this example for you to understand that how conditioned your mind is. It's conditioned. You have to recognize you're dealing with a mind 
which is twisted, which is brainwashed, which is conditioned. The number one thing is you have to recognize that you can't get to freedom through this one because this one is prejudice. It's got its ways and it thinks things should be this way. So this one is not going to lead you to freedom. You have to go beyond this. You have to rise above what you think is right or wrong, what you've been told, and look inside. Inside you will find what is right and what is wrong. Inside. Be a lion. Be a lioness. Where the lion goes, he cuts his own path. Lion doesn't follow anybody's trail. Lion goes where he, she wants to go. So a part of this journey is for us to dive inwards and tune into our own self, the inner guru. You want to call it the higher self, your fifth dimensional self, the angels within, the angels above, it's your own divine self which is speaking to you all the time and is guiding you. We tune into that one. And that one tells you what's right and what's wrong. You did certain things 10 years ago which were right, but today you don't do them anymore because they're not right for you. It changed. You can't go based on certain rules that you've been told this is right or wrong. It all changes as your consciousness expands and you adjust because you're con continuously evolving, you're expanding and you stay open to that. Don't get caught into things should be one way. There is no one way. There is no this way. It's infinite. I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. It's definitely a pleasure. It's my, I'm honored to be at your service. Thank you for your love. I really appreciate the love you, you send us, you give us. Thank you very much for your generous donations. We're really appreciating that. Thank you. It's very, very helpful. We're a small um, enterprise and uh, we're continuously expanding and producing videos, podcasts, free meditations, and we appreciate your help. Tomorrow we're going to get together. This is our, tomorrow is going to be our own, our last session, uh, same time at 9.30 Los Angeles time, 12.30 East Coast and uh, 6.30 in Europe. Followed after our last session on the 23rd, right? 24th, we have the shamanic 23rd and then our shamanic, our shamanic healing. We're having a, well, hold on a second. We need to check some dates. Are you sure? Yes. So the workshop is on 25th and 26th. Are you sure with those dates? Okay. So we're going to have a shamanic healing circle and that's going to be on the 23rd of June. And two days after that, I'm having a two day, uh, July, uh, 23rd of July. And then two days after that, I have the Ascension to Fifth Dimension workshop. It's a two day workshop. It's four hours each day. And in that workshop, um, I'm going to give you tools and also specific meditation exercises. They will be 
some active meditations that it's to activating the grid within yourself. It's to awaken the snake, awakening the giant within yourself, which is sleepy. So we will be doing a series of different active meditations. There's teachings and we, uh, I answer your questions. In addition to that, I have designed a specific private mentorship program. It's called Life Training Program. I wasn't able to offer this program in the past because I used to travel to Europe three times a year, touring around Europe, and I didn't have time to be involved in a private mentorship program with anybody. Now I'm able to do it because obviously I'm not traveling, I'm not touring. So I'm able to offer this program. The program is about four months. We get together once a week for an hour and a half. And this is for anybody who's really serious in their spiritual developments and you, and you need me to help you and guide you to go and discover your blockages first. What's holding you back? Where are your conditionings? What area is it that you're blocked in? Whether you have self-love issues, you have abandonment issues, you have anxiety, depression, fear, where is the blockages? So we go into that and and we clear those areas. And then I walk you through and give you the tools and help you with meditations, healing and transmission towards recognizing yourself. It's very comprehensive, it's very powerful. And I have room for two more students because two of my students are graduating, they're finishing and I have space for two people. So if you're interested in this private mentorship, it's a VIP program, contact me and we will set up an appointment. Uh, we go through it and I give you the details, the price, what it entails, uh, what am I gonna do for you and what I'm expecting you to do in return uh, as far as your practice. And based on your specific needs, I will design a tailor-made program for you. So feel free to contact me. Uh, my email address is info at zaratustra.tv or you can reach out to me via our Facebook pages. Zaratustra 5D or is how you find me on Facebook, my podcast, my YouTube. But basically, if you want a direct answer from me, the best is either to contact me via email or Facebook. Thank you for your time. Sending you lots of love and light. Let's sit together for, in silence for a couple of minutes before we part ways. And I look forward to seeing you today, tomorrow. Namaste. Much love.